20 gallon enclosures are cheap and they're easy to find, but what can you put in there that'll never outgrow it? Today we're gonna go over the top five reptiles that can live in a 20 gallon enclosure for their entire life. My name's Adam, this is Diamond, you're watching Wicked's Wicked Reptiles, stick around. There are in fact some animals and some really cool ones that can live in these 20 gallon enclosures forever. Now, all of these animals can definitely live in larger enclosures. I'm just saying that these guys could live a great life in a 20, but they could live in a 40 or 75 or a room or a rainforest if they wanted to. So let's just get started. Number five, crocodile skinks. Now, these guys are high up on the list because if I got myself a crocodile skink or a pear, I would put them in a 40 gallon that's planted, make it bioactive, make sure that it has some crazy plants in there. But if you wanted something a little bit more simplistic, you could definitely go for a 20 because a 20 gallon aquarium, or that's what the dimensions we're gonna use anyway, a 20 long is 30 by 12 by 12 or the Exoterra version or Zoomed or whatever. I'm not affiliated with any of these companies. Buy whatever you want. Front opening glass enclosure are 24 by 18 inches deep by 12 inches high. I'll put the metric here too, just to make it easy. Those are the dimensions we're working with here in a croc skink because they only get to about 10 inches can live in one of these by themselves with no problem at all. They can live a long, healthy life in an enclosure of a 20 gallon size. Now these are a crepuscular animal from New Guinea and surrounding area. He's gonna go for the year, isn't he? You're starting early today, huh? I would call these an intermediate level animal for sure. Now, because of where they're from and the climate that they're from, they're a cooler species. So their temperatures are cooler than something like, I don't know, a bearded dragon, something like that, which might be easier for you, but they like it super duper humid. Now, a lot of people say this is difficult to achieve. I disagree. You know, you can do lots of things to make sure that humidity doesn't escape, or you can plant the thing or whatever. But either way, cooler and a little bit more humid as well. But these things look like freaking dragons. They're amazing. Crocodile skinks are one of the coolest species you could ever have. They can become handleable, the diet is easy as they're insectivores, and they're not dangerous to you, and they're not super duper flighty if you socialize them. So overall, I think they make great pets, and as the list suggests, they can live in a 20 their entire life. Number four, ringneck snakes. Now, ringneck snakes are something that I featured a few times recently because I think that their popularity is going to jump, and I wanna make sure that you know the right way to house them, not that this is a care guide, but at least uh, an idea of what these things are. Because you're probably gonna start seeing them on Craigslist or Kijiji or whatever else, and if you look at them and say, oh, that Wiccans guy talked about them, at least you might have a little bit of an idea. Again, there is a reason that they are so high up on the list and not kind of closer to number one. Most of them are wild caught. Now they are from North America, so most of us who live here have probably seen them. I've flipped over rocks and seen these awesome animals with these bright bellies and cool little rings around their neck, which is where they get their name. I just don't take them home. I never thought that they would thrive in captivity, but it does seem like they do thrive in captivity, actually. In fact, you can put them in pairs or in colonies, and they do really, really well. Of course, before you cohab anything, do more research than watching some sweaty bald guy talk about something in a room that's 90 degrees. It is so hot in here, so hot. But these are dope animals. They're amazing. They are very unlikely to bite. They are very small. We're talking about they are like 10 to 16 inches, somewhere around there. So anything that is like, it, we're not even approaching a meter at this point. These are tiny, super duper tiny snakes. So these are half the length of a 20. You could probably keep them in a 10. I just, I don't know, I like bigger enclosures for things most of the time. And they're insect eaters, which is amazing because a lot of people don't like feeding rodents to snakes. If you want a whole list of animals, of snakes that don't eat rodents and can eat just insects, well, here you go. Made a whole list for you a couple weeks ago. And these guys were on it because, well, they fit the bill. And feeding things like crickets and black soldier fly larvae, which if you want, you can get shipped directly to your door, by the way, for my friends at Grub Terra. Link in description below and also 10% off. And anyway, these guys, this, the diet is so easy. The care is easy. They do so well. You can keep them together. They don't need a special type of lighting. They're not gonna bite you. I mean, this is kind of like the perfect snake if you're looking for a micro snake. 
Plus they're beautiful and they move around a bunch. So you're gonna be able to watch your animal move, which is why I'm not putting something like a sand bow on here. Although it might fit, it just, I mean like, how fun is it to watch a sandbox, you know? Ooh, he's coming after the sand bows again. Number three, dart frogs. Now, dart frogs are, well, there's a bunch of different species, but all of them are under 1.5 inches or around that area. So they're all super duper small. And you don't have to worry about much height at all because they're tiny, they're not arboreal. They're going to like climb up on logs and stuff, but they're not climbing up trees is basically what I'm saying. And all that matters for these guys is floor space. So a 20 gallon, something like you could do an 18 by 18, which technically is 25 gallons because of the height, but either way, or you can do a 30 by 12 or a 24 by 18, whatever, and you can have a colony of them. They cohab really, really well. And in fact, just as kind of a side note, if you wanted to go up a little bit of a bigger enclosure, like taller, you could have a bunch of dart frogs of whatever species and morning geckos, which also fit on the list, honorable mention, but are not gonna be an entry in the list. And yes, I know dart frogs are frogs, which are amphibians, but I always ruin these lists with amphibians because they're cool and dart frogs are amazing. I literally have one tattooed on the inside of my arm. So I think that uh, I'm gonna have dart frogs eventually one day, today's not the day, but cooler species again, cooler temps, super humid, approaching 90% for many species. So I just think that these guys are underrated and they're beautiful. I mean, these black and yellow ones are amazing. They've, you've got these blue ones as well. I'm not gonna try and pronounce all of the names for them because these guys often have like Latin names, right? And I'm dumb, so. Anyway, the blue ones and the yellow ones. And if you're looking for a breeding project of something that will sell, something, not, don't breed for the sake of breeding. I did a whole video about like the right way to do it. But anyway, if you wanted to start breeding frogs, these guys are a great introduction. If you're interested, right? Get something, breed them because you're interested in the species. But I mean, who wouldn't be interested in a dart frog? I mean, I can't, I can't even like think of the amount of times I've thought about like why I don't have dart frogs. And it's just, I don't have room for them right now. But. If you're a Patreon member, you see the new reptile room. It's huge, it's 400 square feet. Anyway, moving on. Oh, uh, we're just speeding along here. Number two, Schneider skinks. So through the whole video I've been watching, I've got Schneider skinks behind the camera here, and I've been watching them, and they're running around. They have a 35 gallon, there's a pair of them, and now all of a sudden I go up to get one to show you and they're gone. But they're a little goofy, like they're little goofy tricksters. I think they're so cute. Schneider skinks are amazing. They don't get that big. You can definitely keep one in a 20. You can keep them in pairs as well, and you can keep those in bigger enclosures. I've got a 36 by 18 by one foot front opening glass enclosure that I keep mine in. And I'll be honest, I was never a skink guy. I only got these because it was from a subscriber. The pictures were of them being handled. I just assumed they weren't handleable, but they are. They're super handleable. Schneider skinks are amazing. Not to be confused with Berber skinks, although used interchangeably, they are not the same. Reptile Mountain did a video about like the explanation. Anyway, Schneider skinks are freaking amazing. The coloration is beautiful. They're from Africa and Asia. That's where they're from, by the way. Well, these ones aren't. These ones are from 10 minutes from my house. Somebody bred them. But the care is generally easy. No crazy humidity or temperature requirements. The sand, soil type of substrate. I'll do a care guide if you want. Leave a comment below. Hit the like button and that's how I know you want it. I can do a care. Like these are so underrated. I still like, I wake up in a, a sweat at night thinking about, well, also it's hot in here, because I'm thinking about how I didn't include them in the top five skink, the potato parade video, which you can watch right here. What a disaster. I should have, they should have been number one on the list. They are so underrated. I love Schneider skinks and just look at them. I've never had so much fun having an animal in my office. I edit right over here. I get to look over at them. I see them climbing on the top of this. Like it is so hilarious. I love Schneider skinks, but they do bury themselves by the way, which is why I can't find them. I'm like rooting around and they're like, they're kind of like, they're not sand fishy enough for the sandfish club. You know, they're not sandfish skinks, but they kind of like swim in the sand like that. So anyway, they're beautiful. Okay, number one, and something you might not have seen coming for a 20 gallon list, Chinese cave geckos. Yeah, Chinese cave geckos could probably be okay in a 10 gallon, but I'm not the guy who goes bare minimum. I think a 20 gallon would be much better for a Chinese cave gecko. You might even get away with two Chinese cave geckos in a 20, but either way, they do great. They are a humid loving species. They want it humid and they want it cool, 
which is so unusual in comparison to more uh, common reptiles, let's say. But in terms of cool factor, these guys are absolutely amazing. Not only are they easy to care for, we're talking super low maintenance, but they're fun to watch, their appearance is ridiculous, and also in their free time, they do Panic at the Disco cover concerts, all three of them that I have. So it's super fun to me just to watch them interact with each other. I love their eyeliner. I'm pretty sure they'd have a sweep from like 2008, you know what I'm talking about, if they could. I just think overall, they're kind of like an emo version of a leopard gecko. Plus the diet is easy. They're insectivores, which I love. You just go to the pet store, reptile store out of focus here, whatever store you get your bugs from, or you get them shipped again, right to your door and uh, you feed them and that's it. And you clean up their poop or you set up in a bioactive because they do great in bioactives and that's it. They're not gonna come out during the day, so you don't need a UVB light. They're completely nocturnal, or some people will say crepuscular, but in my observation, they're out at night. So I don't know, I just can't get enough of these guys. They're fun and they're handleable and they've got really strong feet so they can like hang on rocks and stuff. So if you made a rock background, they'd probably try to scale it, although they're technically terrestrial. Man, I love them. I think that they're amazing. They're gonna become more popular in the hobby. And when they do, we're gonna learn so much more about them and I can't wait. So there you go, those are your top five reptiles that can live their entire life comfortably and thrive in 20 gallon enclosures. What do you think? Is there something that I should have put on the list? I can always do a part three. This is a part two, by the way. First video is right here if you wanna watch that. Thank you guys so much for hitting the like, subscribe, leaving a comment. All that stuff costs you nothing, but really does tell YouTube, hey, watch these videos. It helps me so much. So thank you for doing that. And as always, a special thank you to the Patreon supporters. You guys are gonna get the first look, I don't know when this video is coming out, maybe you've already seen it. The brand new eight foot by four foot enclosures are coming. The brand new reptile room is like, paint's going on tomorrow, floor's going on this weekend. I've got changes happening and you'll be the first ones to see it. And you get discounts on the merch, you get extra videos, videos early, all sorts of stuff behind the scenes and uh, I mean, how much can you really talk during a video, dude? Because I do videos twice a week, that means that I'll see you on Monday.